And see, it used to be that one person would see something in the sky and say, look, Martha, look, there's something up there. The evidence is accumulating over the last several years. Now we have multiple sightings by multiple modes. Are we alone in the universe or are there extraterrestrial beings out there? The debate on this topic has been raging for decades, with skeptics and believers often at odds. But what happens when one of the world's foremost experts on theoretical physics, Michio Kaku, speaks out on the subject? Brace yourself for what he has to say, because in today's video we discuss Michio Kaku finally breaking his silence on UFO and alien sightings, and delivering a warning that's sure to make you question everything. Have you ever wondered what aliens and UFOs really look like? Science fiction movies have influenced the answers of many fans of extraterrestrial life. However, there have been numerous sightings of UFOs and aliens that have forced even the most skeptical people to join the discussion about their existence. The topic has become so mainstream that even governmental institutions have had to weigh in. One of the most prominent scholars to do so is Michio Kaku. He is a well-known theoretical physicist, futurist and science popularizer from the United States and a professor at the City College of New York and the CUNY Graduate Center. His contributions to string theory have advanced our understanding of the universe's fundamental nature and he is the author of several New York Times bestsellers including The God Equation, The Quest for a Theory of Everything. Kaku's work has been recognized with numerous awards, including the Sir Arthur Clarke Lifetime Achievement Award in 2021 for his efforts to bridge science and science fiction. Now, during a recent podcast with Joe Rogan, Michio Kaku shared his thoughts on how the conversation surrounding UFOs has evolved over time. He said it used to be that one person would see something in the sky and say, look Martha, look, there's something up there. But now, with multiple sightings occurring across various modes of observation, the discussion around UFOs has become much more complex. It's a phenomenon that's been around for centuries, however, and many people would be surprised to learn that the first recorded instance of a UFO sighting in America dates all the way back to 1639. John Winthrop, a prominent Puritan leader and prolific journal keeper, documented the event in which a group of credible people witnessed a great light in the sky over a muddy river in Boston. This event, which took place near Fenway Park, has become a foundational part of American history. But now, more than a century after his death, John Winthrop's leadership of the Massachusetts colony would play a significant role in shaping the fate of the United States. In academia, he is highly regarded for his meticulous documentation of his life events and the struggles of the colony's people in its early years. Among his many writings, there are accounts of a mysterious object that abducted three men in a boat. Winthrop also reported two additional UFO sightings over Boston Harbor in 1644. These accounts of strange aerial phenomena long overlooked have recently captured renewed interest especially after government and military officials admitted to researching UFOs for decades. What were once dismissed as fringe conspiracy theories are now considered by academics and serious analysts. During the podcast, Kaku then expands on a particular initiative that had a significant influence on how UFO sightings are officially dealt with over many years. He said 50 years ago, there was a congressional hearing coming out of Project Blue Book and there was a lot of laughter and a lot of jokes about things. Little green man in outer space, 50 years ago, that's the way it was. Now things have changed. The Project Blue Book Kaku talked about was an extensive program of the United States Air Force that systematically studied unidentified flying objects from March 1952 to December 1969. It was the most extensive and longest running of the USAF's official inquiries into UFO sightings, compiling reports on over 12,000 sightings or related events. The primary goals of Project Blue Book were to scientifically analyze UFO-related data and to determine whether UFOs posed a threat to national security. Captain Edward J. Ruppelt, who headed the project, also introduced the term unidentified flying object to replace the popular but misleading terms flying saucer and flying disc. 
Despite investigating thousands of UFO reports over 17 years, Project Blue Book found that many could be explained by natural phenomena or conventional aircraft. However, 701 of the 12,618 cases remained unidentified even after a thorough investigation, leaving a lingering sense of mystery and wonder. Several notable cases, like the Lubbock Lights, Mantle Incident, Leveland Case, Lonnie Zamora Incident and Exeter Incident, became well known and sparked debates among UFO enthusiasts and investigators. Despite this, Project Blue Book faced numerous obstacles and criticisms during its operation. Some critiques came from the USAF or other government branches, including the 1953 Robertson Panel, which proposed discrediting UFO reports and discouraging public interest in them. Other critics consisted of civilian UFO organisations, journalists, independent researchers and public figures who accused Project Blue Book of bias, incompetence, secrecy or concealment. In 1969, Project Blue Book was shut down after the USA have commissioned an independent scientific analysis of its data in the form of the Condon Report. Kaku then points out that now the rules have changed when it comes to UFO sightings. It used to be that those who claimed to have seen them had to prove it, but now the burden of proof has shifted to the military and the Pentagon to show that these sightings are not extraterrestrial. Last June, a highly anticipated report was released on Unexplained Aerial Phenomena, or UAP, which found more than 140 cases that could not be explained. This report came after leaked military footage and testimony from Navy pilots who helped to destigmatize a subject that had long been associated with conspiracy theories and doubtful sightings. The interview with 60 Minutes brought the issue of UFOs to the forefront as members of the US Navy shared their encounters with these mysterious objects on America's coasts. Then further into the podcast, Kaku delves deeper into the subject of UFO sightings in the present day. He said, it's not just one person anymore, but a group of credible witnesses who have seen strange aerial phenomena. And it's not just radar readings, but there are also visual sightings, infrared sensors, and even telescopic evidence. With so many modes of observation, the burden of proof has increased significantly. The question is no longer whether UFOs exist, but rather what are they and where they come from. Let's take a look at one of the most well-known UFO sightings in American history, the Phoenix Lights Incident of March 13, 1997. This bizarre event, which lasted between 7.30 and 10.30 p.m., had people from Nevada, Arizona and Mexico all reporting the same thing, an otherworldly swarm of UFOs lighting up the night sky, a phenomena that became known as the Phoenix Lights. The sightings included floating orbs and a massive V-shaped craft that was allegedly the size of several football fields. People were so alarmed that they flooded the police department phone lines in search of answers. Even pilots in the area reported what they saw, but air traffic controllers noticed nothing out of the ordinary on their radars. And just as quickly as the Phoenix lights appeared, they vanished without a trace. However, the government later claimed that the orbs were merely flares used in a military training exercise and the V-shaped craft was just a formation of planes flying together. Arizona's then governor, Fife Symington, was initially dismissive of the state's concerns about the Phoenix Lights UFO. However, his opinion changed when he revealed that he had also seen the enormous objects and felt they were not of this world. The first sighting of the Phoenix Lights occurred at around 6.55 p.m. when an unidentified man claimed to have seen a V-shaped formation in the skies near Henderson, Nevada. Later, a former Arizona police officer reported seeing a cluster of orange lights at around 8.15 p.m. These were referred to by many as fireballs. Two minutes later, other reports of white and reddish orbs hovering above Prescott, Arizona came in. It was now clear that there were two types of UFOs in the sky. One was a swarm of individual orbs and the other was a V-shaped craft. The V-shaped formation contained anywhere from five to seven lights that slowly soared in unison from the northwest before turning almost south. According to the National UFO Reporting Center, as the formation moved, one of the lights in the back allegedly moved forward before falling back. 
The V-shape was famously captured on video with three lights on each prong and the seventh at the tip. Witnesses described it as being the size of downtown Prescott, completely obscured the stars and completely silent. One witness even claimed, we don't have anything that big. Bill Grava, a seasoned air traffic controller with 12 years of experience, was working at Sky Harbour International Airport Tower that night and described the incident as inexplicable and bizarre. Even years later, he still couldn't wrap his head around what he witnessed. Despite these accounts, the then governor of Arizona attempted to sweep the incident under the rug. Phoenix Councilwoman Frances Barwood was the first to publicly call for an investigation into the Phoenix Lights, but the local government's request to the Air Force was declined since Project Blue Book had been terminated in 1969. As a result, citizens looked to independent organisations like the Mutual UFO Network for answers, but they never got the official explanation they demanded. Initially claiming he was unaware of the incident, Governor Symington eventually scheduled a press conference on June 19, 1997 to address the situation. However, to the surprise of witnesses and reporters, Symington made a mockery of the incident, claiming that the government had captured an alien and then presenting his costumed handcuffed chief of staff to the crowd. However, in 2007, Symington broke his silence and admitted to multiple interviews that he believed the Phoenix lights were real and extraordinary. He revealed that he dismissed the incident at the time to prevent panic among his constituents, but privately he had concerns for a decade. Although there was an attempt to suppress the Phoenix Light sightings, it ended up making a profound impact on many people's lives. Take for instance the cement truck driver who saw the lights and declared, I'll never be the same. Previously, he would have laughed at the notion of UFOs, but now he has a completely different outlook on the matter. And he is not alone in his sentiments, as the Phoenix Lights event left an indelible mark on countless others. If you're intrigued by this subject, you might want to check out the recent podcast of Joe Rogan with Michio Kaku. He delves into the topics of UFOs and the role of the US government, and it's definitely worth a listen. But we want to hear your opinion on whether he's right or not. Share your thoughts with us in the comments section below.